Picture this. An entire mountain range in China has disappeared under solar panels. Not a hillside, not a valley. An entire mountain range stretching as far as your eyes can see, covered in millions of reflective blue squares that shimmer like an ocean made of glass. The Guizhou solar farm just hit 15 million kilowatts of output. That's enough electricity to power 7 million homes every single day. Welcome back. Today, we're heading to one of China's poorest provinces where mountains used to mean poverty, isolation, and impossible terrain. Now, those same mountains are printing money, clean money. Guizhou province sits in southwestern China. It's not Beijing, it's not Shanghai. For decades, it was known for three things, extreme poverty, endless mountains, and weather so unpredictable, farmers couldn't grow enough food to survive. The terrain here is brutal. Mountains rise straight up like walls. Roads twist and turn for miles just to move a few kilometers forward. Rain falls 200 days a year. The sun barely shows its face. So naturally, China decided this was the perfect place to build one of the world's largest solar farms. Sounds crazy, right? But here's where it gets interesting. The Guizhou Solar Project is changing the entire playbook for renewable energy. Because China didn't just place solar panels on flatland like everyone else. They engineered a way to carpet mountainsides with solar technology in a place where sunlight is scarce and rain never stops. 15 million kilowatts. That number should be impossible in a region like this. Let's figure out how they did it. First, let's understand what 15 million kilowatts actually means. Imagine every single person in New York City turning on every light, every computer, every air conditioner at the exact same time. The Guizhou solar farm could power that twice over. A typical solar farm in California might cover a few square miles. Guizhou's installation spans hundreds of square kilometers across multiple mountain ranges. We're not talking about panels in neat rows on flat desert land. We're talking about solar panels climbing up 45 degree slopes, wrapping around peaks, following the contours of terrain that construction crews said was unbuildable. Here's a comparison that makes it real. If you took every solar panel from this project and laid them flat, you'd cover an area roughly the size of 21,000 football fields. But size alone doesn't explain the shock factor. What makes this project unprecedented is the engineering challenge. Installing solar panels on flat land is straightforward. You dig foundations, mount structures, connect cables, done. Guizhou's mountains don't work that way. The slopes are steep, the soil shifts, landslides happen every rainy season. Traditional construction equipment can't reach most locations. Roads don't exist in these areas. They had to be carved from rock. So China brought in specialized equipment, cable-operated cranes that could lift panels up sheer cliffs, drone-guided surveying systems to map every centimeter of unstable terrain, and thousands of workers who rappelled down mountainsides to bolt panels into rock faces. The logistics alone sound impossible, transporting millions of solar panels into remote mountains with no infrastructure building access roads through terrain so rough that even off-road vehicles couldn't pass, installing electrical systems that can survive typhoons, landslides, and temperature swings from freezing winters to scorching summers. And they did all of this in a province where 40% of the population lived below the poverty line just a decade ago. Here's the question everyone's asking. Why Guizhou? If you're China and you want to build a massive solar farm, you have options. The Gobi Desert in the north has endless sunshine and flat land. Tibet has high altitude and clear skies. Xinjiang has space for days. But China chose Guizhou, a province where it rains constantly, where mountains make construction nightmarish, where poverty runs so deep that young people flee to cities just to survive. The answer comes down to one word, desperation. Guizhou needed economic transformation, fast. The province had been left behind in China's economic boom. While coastal cities built skyscrapers and tech hubs, Guizhou remained stuck in the past. Subsistence farming, crumbling infrastructure, mass migration to wealthier provinces. Beijing saw an opportunity. Renewable energy was the future. Solar technology was advancing rapidly. And Guizhou had something no other province could offer. Land. Millions of hectares of mountainous land that nobody was using. Land that couldn't grow profitable crops. Land that had no industrial value, until now. The Chinese government launched a strategy called Green Mountains, Golden Waters. The idea was simple, turn environmental assets into economic engines. Mountains that trapped people in poverty would now generate electricity and jobs. 
But there was a bigger calculation at play. China's energy demand is staggering. The country uses more electricity than the United States and India combined. Coal still dominates, but Beijing knows coal won't fly in the long term. Not with climate commitments. Not with pollution choking major cities. And not with global pressure mounting. Solar power had to scale. Not just a little. Massively. Guizhou became the testing ground for a radical concept. If you can make solar work here, in cloudy, mountainous, logistically impossible terrain, you can make it work anywhere. So they went all in. Now let's talk about how they actually built this thing. Traditional solar farms are designed for deserts and plains. Panels sit on fixed mounts or tracking systems that follow the sun across the sky. Simple. Efficient. Guizhou threw that playbook out the window. The panels here are mounted on custom-designed structures that grip mountainsides like giant metal spiders. Each structure is anchored into bedrock using deep drilling techniques borrowed from bridge construction. The mounts are flexible. They can tilt and adjust to capture sunlight at different angles throughout the day, compensating for the irregular terrain. Here's the clever part. Instead of fighting the mountains, engineers use them. Mountains in Guizhou run east-west. That means the southern slopes get decent sun exposure, even on cloudy days. The northern slopes? Not so much. So the team concentrated panel density on south-facing slopes and used northern slopes for support infrastructure, maintenance roads, inverter stations, battery storage facilities. They also solved a problem that would cripple most solar projects. Rain. Guizhou gets hammered by monsoons. Panels can't just sit there collecting water, or they'll corrode, short-circuit, or get washed away in landslides. So engineers designed drainage systems beneath every panel array. Water flows through channels carved into the rock, preventing erosion and keeping panels dry. But the real innovation is in the tracking technology. Most solar farms use mechanical trackers, motors that rotate panels to follow the sun. In Guizhou's harsh environment, those motors would fail constantly. So China deployed AI-powered tracking systems. Sensors analyze weather patterns in real time, adjusting panel angles based on cloud cover rain intensity, and sun position. When a storm rolls in, panels automatically tilt to minimize wind resistance and hail damage. The result? A solar farm that operates efficiently in conditions where traditional solar technology would collapse. 15 million kilowatts of power generation changes everything for Guizhou. Before this project, the province imported electricity from neighboring regions. It paid premium prices because it couldn't produce enough energy for its own industries. That made it unattractive to manufacturers and tech companies looking for cheap, reliable power. Now, Guizhou is an energy exporter. The solar farm feeds directly into China's national grid, but it also powers local industries. Data centers are moving into the province. Companies like Apple and Huawei are building server farms here because electricity is now cheaper than in coastal provinces. Manufacturing is expanding. Jobs are appearing in places that had nothing but subsistence farming a decade ago. Here's a number that tells the story. Since construction began on the solar project, Guizhou's GDP growth has averaged 8% annually. That's faster than China's national average. Unemployment in the project's surrounding areas has dropped by 30%. Villages that were losing young people to migration are now seeing them return for construction jobs, maintenance work, and tech positions. But the economic impact goes beyond jobs and GDP. China is positioning Guizhou as a model for other developing regions. If solar can work in mountains, it can work in the Himalayas, the Andes, the Appalachians. Countries across Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America face the same challenge, mountainous terrain that limits development. Guizhou is proving that mountains aren't obstacles, they're opportunities, and China is selling the technology. The custom mounting systems, the AI tracking software, the drainage solutions, all of it is being packaged into export products. China is positioning itself as the global leader in difficult terrain solar installations. When Indonesia or Ethiopia wants to build a solar farm in their mountains, they'll come to China. The Guizhou project isn't just about electricity. It's about exporting a model of development that locks other countries into Chinese technology, Chinese financing and Chinese influence. But let's not pretend this is a perfect story. Building solar farms across mountains comes with serious costs that don't show up in the press releases. First, there's the environmental disruption, carving roads into mountains, drilling into bedrock, clear-cutting vegetation for panel installation. It all takes a toll. Wildlife habitats get destroyed, water runoff patterns change, 
erosion increases in areas where vegetation used to hold soil in place. Chinese officials claim the project is environmentally friendly, but environmentalists in the region tell a different story. Reports of increased flooding downstream, animals displaced from their habitats, local farmers complaining that solar panel runoff is contaminating irrigation water. Then there's the maintenance nightmare. Solar panels typically last 25 to 30 years, but that's in ideal conditions. In Guizhou, panels face constant rain, humidity, temperature swings, and the occasional landslide. Some sections of the solar farm are already showing degradation after just five years of operation. Replacing panels on flatland is straightforward. Replacing them on a 45-degree mountain slope in the middle of monsoon season? That's a different challenge entirely. Maintenance costs are projected to be three times higher than conventional solar farms. And here's the uncomfortable truth. We don't know if this is economically sustainable long-term. China poured massive subsidies into this project. The national government, provincial authorities, and state-owned banks all contributed. But when you strip away the subsidies, does the math actually work? If electricity prices drop, or if cheaper energy storage technology emerges elsewhere, Guizhou's solar bet could turn into a financial black hole. China has a history of building massive projects that look impressive, but don't pencil out economically. Ghost cities, bridges to nowhere, high-speed rail lines that run empty. Is Guizhou Solar the next great leap forward? Or the next expensive lesson? Here's why Guizhou matters beyond China's borders. The world needs to generate massive amounts of clean energy, fast. But most of the planet isn't flat desert. Most countries have mountains, forests, irregular terrain. If solar power only works in ideal conditions, we're limiting where we can build. That means slower adoption, higher costs, and more reliance on fossil fuels. Guizhou is proof that solar can scale in difficult places. That opens up possibilities everywhere. Think about Nepal, mountains everywhere, energy poverty crippling development. Now imagine covering Himalayan slopes with solar panels using Guizhou's technology. Or Peru, where the Andes dominate the landscape. Or Ethiopia, where rugged terrain has blocked industrial growth for decades. This isn't just about technology. It's about redesigning how we think about geography and energy. For decades, mountains meant isolation. They blocked trade, prevented infrastructure, kept regions poor. Now, mountains could become power generators. The same terrain that limited development becomes the foundation of a new economy. But here's the geopolitical angle. Whoever controls this technology controls energy development in half the world. Right now, that's China. They've solved the engineering problems. They've tested it at scale. They've built the supply chains. When other countries want to replicate this, they'll need Chinese equipment, Chinese expertise, Chinese financing. That gives China leverage. Energy dependence is strategic dependence. Countries that buy into China's solar technology are buying into China's economic ecosystem. And Beijing knows it. So here's where we are. China just turned an entire mountain range into a power plant. 15 million kilowatts flowing from terrain that wasn't supposed to support this kind of technology. A province that was synonymous with poverty is now exporting electricity and economic models to the world. But the bigger question isn't what China built. It's what happens next. Because if mountains can generate power, what else becomes possible? And when China starts exporting this technology to dozens of countries across Asia, Africa and Latin America, how does that reshape the global balance of power? We're watching energy transform from something you extract from the ground into something you harvest from the landscape itself. And the country that masters that transition might just control the next century. What do you think? Is Guizhou the future of renewable energy? Or just another expensive experiment? Let me know in the comments. And if you think turning mountains into solar farms is extreme, wait until you see what else China's building. Click here to watch six mega projects that prove China builds the impossible because Guizhou is just the beginning.